So let's see how we reduce a fraction, a rational function to proper fraction. Okay, so for instance, we're going to look at this particular example where on the top we have a polynomial of degree four and on the bottom we have a polynomial of degree three. So the degree on top is greater than the degree on the bottom. We don't want that. In order to be able to split the fraction, we need a proper function, proper fraction. It's difficult to, to uh, keep function and fraction separate, isn't it? So I'll probably get confused if I do, please forgive me. All right, so what we're going to do is we want to try and uh, do something so as to change that fraction into a proper fraction. Of course, because this is not a proper fraction, once we do that, we're going to be left over with some pieces. But those pieces are going to be easy to handle. So how are we going to do it? There are actually two ways of doing it. First of all, we can use long division. Now, you may not remember how to do it, so I'm going to show you an example of uh, how it's done, or actually how it's done in this particular case. And uh, this will uh, hopefully ring a few bells for, from uh, early in um, junior high, probably, or uh, early high school. And then, if you remember that the technique is pretty much the same as what you do with, uh, when you do long division of numbers all the way to elementary school. All right, so how do we do that? First of all, we write down the numerator and the denominator. And notice that for the numerator, I left a huge gap between the x to the fourth and the plus four. That's because as we do this division, we need to consider each and every possible power of x. So I'm going to assume that actually those powers are there with a coefficient of zero. That's going to make my procedure a lot easier. Okay. So first of all, fill in all the blanks. Make sure that when you write the numerator, you have all the powers that you need from the highest present to all the way to the constant. Okay. Even the constant, if it's not there, you have to put it in. You have to put it in as a zero. Right. Then what we do is we divide the two highest power terms. Okay. So in this case, we're looking at x to the third and x to the fourth. Now remember, x to the fourth is in the numerator, so we do x to the fourth divided by x cubed. Well, that's easy. That gives us an x. We write it down on the top. And then after we've done that, we're going to multiply the denominator by this factor that we have um, figured, uh, this quotient that we have figured out of x. So for instance, we do x cubed times x. That gives us x to the fourth. We write that under the x to the fourth. Uh, that's not surprising that we end up with the same number because that's how we got that x as a fraction, right? But the next few terms are going to be different. So after that, we're going to look at the next term, minus 8x squared. We're going to multiply that by x. We end up with minus 8x cubed, which put, we put under the x cubed term. And then the same thing with the x, 16x. We multiply that by x. We get 16x squared. We put it under the x squared. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the numerator that we started from uh, and minus this product that we've obtained so far. Okay, So when we subtract, we get 0 for the power of 4. We get 8x cubed. Watch out for the minuses. Remember, we're subtracting uh, for the cube and then minus 16 for the x squared. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do it again. So what we do is we take the 8x cubed that we have now I've lost my mouse here. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Here it is. So we have our two, uh, our 8x cubed. We're going to divide that again by the x cubed that we have here. And that gives us an 8. Very good. So we're going to write that plus 8 as part of our quotient. Remember what we're building up on the top line there on the top row is the quotient. And now we are going to uh, multiply again. Um, and so that tells us if we multiply x cubed uh, times 8, it gives us 8x cubed. And now we're going to have to multiply the other two terms. So minus 8x squared times 8 gives us minus 64x squared. And 16x times 8 gives us 128x. OK, you may want to use your calculator or use a piece of paper. Again, the calculations, are, believe me, in the test are not going to be as difficult as this one. And then we're going to subtract. At this point, when we subtract, you want to check that I did the algebra right, we end up with 48x squared minus 128x plus 4. Now, notice at this point, the highest power we see in this remainder is actually lower than the power in the denominator. So we're going to stop. So this is as far as we can go, right? We cannot divide 48x squared divided by x cubed. So we're going to stop here. Also notice in the quotient, we ended up with the uh, term of power 1 with a constant. Well, there's not much and there's no more that we can put in as part of the quotient. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the fraction we started with can be written as the quotient, which is x plus 8, 
plus the remainder divided by the original denominator. So notice that the x and the 8, remember we're trying to integrate this. So the x and the 8 are easy to integrate, so we're left just with the remaining fraction, which is now in proper form. The degree at the top is less than the degree at the bottom, which is what we want. Okay? So we have uh, achieved we have achieved the reduction to proper fraction. There is another method, method for reducing the fraction to proper form that does not involve long division um, and it involves instead a different method and the method is that of adding and subtracting appropriate terms. Some people prefer this method, some people prefer to stick to long division, um, they're both equivalent as long as they're done right and therefore I'll leave it up to you the decision of which one you prefer better. Again remember that what I'm showing you here is a slightly more uh, complex situation just to show you a few a few more uh, little details of what can happen. Uh, in real situation the, both, the calculation in both cases will be a little bit easier. Okay, so don't, uh, don't panic. Uh, so how does this method work? Basically it consists of manipulating the fraction in order to make some pieces of the top look pretty much like the bottom. Okay, so for instance uh, in the top right now we have an x to the fourth. Well x to the fourth can be thought of as x cubed plus x, uh, sorry, times x, right? So it would be nice if we also had terms in the top that look like minus 8x squared times x and plus 16x times x because then in that case we could collect that common x and uh, split that piece apart and uh, cancel with the bottom. Now probably you have lost me on what I'm saying uh, but the idea is the, is the following. What I want to do is I want to add um, the last two terms of the denominator each multiplied by x on the numerator. Of course if I'm adding them I have to subtract them as well so here we go. So what I want to do is I have my x to the fourth so I'm going to add minus 8x cubed. Remember the, the idea is that x to the fourth is obtained from x cubed multiplying by x so I'm taking the other two terms and multiplying them by x and then after I've added them I'm going to subtract them. So I end up with minus 8x cubed plus 16x squared and then plus 8x cubed minus 16x squared in order to keep things balanced. Okay? Then I'm going to take the first two terms which are the ones that I need and put them together with the x and leave the other two terms on the side. So the first three terms that you see there, just forget about the bracket, uh, will be x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 16x squared. They have an x in common and what I'm left with inside the bracket is x cubed plus minus 8x squared plus 16x which is exactly the same as the denominator. Plus I have a whole bunch of leftover stuff on the top. But that's okay because now I can split that piece and I can cancel that common factor. So I'm left just with x, right? x and what else? x and another fraction which as you can see either from the, the, the top row or the last one that I've um, shown you uh, is still not in proper form uh, but at least we have lowered the, the degree of the top. It went down from 4 to 3. Now we can re repeat the same procedure. We notice that 8x cubed and x cubed are only different by a factor of 8. Oh, if we had the other two terms multiplied by 8. Well, we can add and subtract them. So we're going to add negative 64x squared and 128x and we're going to subtract them. Okay, so what we can do is I can take the first three terms, collect the 8 that they have in common. Remember, I multiplied everything by 8, so they've got to have, have an 8 in common. And so I'm left with 8 times the same uh, expression as the denominator, plus some leftover stuff. Remember, the 48x squared is obtained by putting together the 64 x squared that I got from adding and subtracting and the minus 16 x squared which was there in the first place and similarly uh, the, one, the minus 128 x is moved to the right hand side and the 4 comes from before. I'm going to split this again, right? So I'm going to split that as uh, the x that I had from before uh, plus something else which has a common factor which I can cancel and that becomes just an 8 and then we're, I'm left with the last fraction. The result is exactly the same as what I had through long division. Again, just a different technique and you're free to use either one of those.